Welcome to our first and hopefully not last patron supportive video series, The Faces of Anime. In this series, we've chosen to highlight the most influential and popular animation character designers in the industry nowadays, an overview of their careers, what makes their style so attractive, and the control this gives them over the final product. And so feels appropriate to start with the artist whose characters have been absolutely everywhere over the last year, Masayoshi Tanaka. As a child of the 70s, Tanaka fell in love with anime through titles like Osamu Dezaki's Adventures of Gamba, Hayao Miyazaki's Future Boy Conan, and Yoshiyuki Tomino's Invincible Superman Zambot 3. He was so into it that he even started paying attention to the animators themselves, starting with Ichiro Itano from his work on the original Macross's opening. And rather than being a quickly forgotten childhood hobby, his passion for anime only kept increasing, and so did his list of favorite anime. Gainax landmarks like Gunbuster and Evangelion, Satoshi Kon's mesmerizing Perfect Blue, and Mamoru Oshii films like Pat Labor and Ghost in the Shell. Even nowadays, as busy as he is, he's still a very active fan who keeps finding new titles to add to his collection of favorites. But let's go back to the young Tanaka. That love for the medium made him join an anime research club while in college, and the knowledge he acquired gave him a leg up over the competition when he decided to join the industry. So he joined Yoani, the Yogi Animation Academy, where he studied under their animation course. After graduating, it was time to finally make his way into the industry, joining the ranks of Studio Artland, where he stayed for around a decade before going freelance. Tanaka has commented in interviews that his first job at Artland was in an outsourced episode of Sakura Momoko Theater Koji Koji in 1997, although his first explicit credit was as an in-betweener in episode 10 of Princess 9. His career then progressed as you would expect for a promising youngster. He was promoted to key animator for a second series of Legends of Galactic Heroes Gaiden, and then received his first chance as full animation director on Galaxy Angel episode 21, just over three years after his debut. While still at Artland, he spent years working on important titles, both the studio's own productions and episodes outsourced to the company. One of the most important titles while he matured as an artist was the original Mushishi, where he learned under the legendary character designer and animation director Yoshihiko Umakoshi, who is responsible for the likes of Kasher and Sins, Ojimajo Doremi, Hardcatch Precure, and even the original Berserk series. And so we arrive at 2006, which marks the moment where Tanaka's career would change. Artland was entrusted with the adaptation of Hitman Reborn, a relatively big Shonen Jump title. And rather than proceed cautiously, they decided to go down the adventurous route. Kenichi Imaizumi, who has stayed a good friend of Tanaka's ever since those Artland days, was going to make his debut as series director. And of course Tanaka himself was entrusted with character designs for the first time. It was a risky decision, but ultimately it went through thanks to the person who oversaw the project, the late industry legend Noboru Ishiguro. And that's when Masayoshi Tanaka found his true calling. Don't get me wrong, Tanaka was, and still is, a good key animator. His versatility allows him to pull off snappy action and character acting alike, with a fairly distinct sense of timing. He doesn't need many drawings to fill a scene with loss of personality. He even experimented with other tasks during those years, proving he could have been a capable storyboarder if he had intended to be. But it was as character designer where he reached new heights, or to be precise, as character designer and chief animation director. One of the points we want to stress in this series is that character designers don't only define the look of the cast, but often end up being the ultimate authority when it comes to the animation as the chief supervisors. And that's something Tanaka has become exceedingly good at. He's seemingly fast and thorough with his corrections, liberally redrawing everything to ensure the drawings and the animation itself are high quality. Chief animation directors often have to be very selective with their work so they focus on moments like close-ups of the main characters so that they always resemble the original designs. Experts like Tanaka, however, will gladly try to polish up complex or nuanced animation cuts even while tasked with supervising a whole TV series or movie. His work is so extensive and impressive that there have been multiple exhibits showing off just how much he redraws in his popular titles. So, just what kinds of designs are they? If you had to describe it with one word, you could call them fresh. Tanaka specializes in adolescent characters that truly feel youthful. It's not just a superficial attempt to make cute girls and hot boys. He'll integrate minute details into the designs themselves, like a character's first attempt to be fashionable, and the very distinct teenage awkwardness that has become a staple of his designs. There is some degree of idealization. This is animation after all, but his original work in particular tends to feel very believable. The versatility we mentioned before serves him well here too. While he has a very recognizable style, he can mold it depending on the needs of the project, to the point that even when adapting the same illustrator's work, he might end up with vastly different takes to best fit the tone they're going for, 
In the end, what brings together his work to make it so distinct are those prevalent design philosophies as well as some technical aspects. The shapes of the faces, with the outlines of jaws and chins in particular, are an easy tell. Talented as he is, it's no wonder that he built solid relationships with many important directors. This includes people like Tetsuro Araki, who, before becoming one of the best known anime directors with Attack on Titan, was in charge of the ridiculous High School of the Dead anime alongside Tanaka. Back when he was a child, the first designer that Tanaka noticed was Haruhiko Mikimoto, and it's thanks to his friendship with Araki that he got to supervise Mikimoto's original designs, at least for a little bit, for Kabaneri of the Iron Fortress. If we're talking about important bonds though, one clearly stands out above the rest, Tatsuyuki Nagai, with whom he's produced many of his most popular titles. They met for the first time during the second season of Mahoromatic from episode Outsource to Artland, when Nagai was a newbie episode director and Tanaka was still a key animator at Artland. Although Nagai had no background as an animator, Tanaka noted that his storyboards went to great lengths to depict the emotions of the characters, an approach he found compatible with his own thoroughness. For the first collaboration, Toradora, they worked closely from the very beginning, with Tanaka drawing image boards during the pre-production process until they nailed the atmosphere they wanted for the series. Toradora turned out to be a massive hit and marked another turning point in Tanaka's career, so it's no surprise that they continued to work together. Tanaka and Nagai, almost always alongside the popular writer Mario Kata, returned for projects like Anohana, Waiting in the Summer, and more recently, The Anthem of the Heart. By this point, Masayoshi Tanaka was already quite popular, not only within the industry, but amongst the fandom as well. Thanks to movies with some mainstream reach like Anthem, his name even started to become a useful promotional tool even amongst general audiences. All that was left was one final relationship with a superstar to take him to the next level. You might have heard of Makoto Shinkai, director of the highest grossing anime film of all time, Your Name. Yeah, that one. While Tanaka and Shinkai had not collaborated much until then, they had been fans of each other's work for quite some time. Tanaka had become aware of Shinkai's work with Voices of a Distant Star, whereas Shinkai paid attention to him starting with Toradora. In 2014, they finally had a chance to work together for the charming commercial Crossroad, a beautiful short film that played to both their strengths. Crossroad went over so well that they were sure to collaborate again, and that's exactly what happened with Your Name. There was one issue, however. Pre-production for the film started in 2014, with Shinkai pitching the idea in July, and the design process starting a few months later. This was no problem for Tanaka, but once the animation process started in spring of 2015, there was too much of an overlap with the Anthem of the Heart, Tanaka's other film due September of that year. His thoroughness requires lots of dedication, so he had to give up on a direct animation role for your name. Tanaka came up with the concepts of the characters early on alongside Shinkai, and using those ideas, the character acting master, Masashi Ando, drew all the required design sheets for the animators, as well as supervising the actual film. To make up for it a little, Tanaka worked as animation director on Your Name's opening after Anthem wrapped up its production. Some shots are strikingly different from the movie itself, as Tanaka's strong artistic voice shines through. In the end, it's not that wild of a departure from the rest of the film, but even his official illustrations stand out from most other promotional material. It's a bit of a shame that this happened to be the one time he could not participate to his full extent, but considering their chemistry and the success of the film, I would expect them to work together once again. And that's it for the first trial episode of our series highlighting the most noteworthy animator character designers of today. We've put together a couple of videos to see if people are interested. So if you like what you're seeing and think the format has potential, please head over to our Patreon and throw some money our way. Producing this on top of all the regular content is quite the effort, so we've set a new goal to justify spending even more time and resources on producing these videos. If these videos just aren't your thing, but you find the Sakuga Boru and Sakuga Blog to be useful resources, feel free to support us on Patreon either way, since we've also got new plans for those. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next month, hopefully not for the last time.